Now I've noticed wherever I go to North East Wales, it's difficult to come across somewhere not named after St Gorman, in stone or water. Many churches are dedicated to him, and numerous wells and springs, and many long lost. He seems to be everywhere. And of course, his Capel Gorman, this en enigmatic passage tomb named after him. Uh, St Gorman, or St Germanus as is also known, was born in ancient Gaul at Auxerre in France, around the year 378 I think it was. He was well connected and began a promising career in Roman politics, but eventually chose religion over government. Now this was also around the time of the High King Vortigern, and the arrival of the Saxons in Britain. And there's one elaborate tale uh, told in the 8th century by a Welsh writer, Nenius, and it records a story of St Germanus where he overthrew a horde of Picts and Saxons somewhere near Mould. And he, he beat them with destructive miracles reminiscent of biblical stories of divine retribution. He seems very influential in Wales even to this day. But Capel Gorman Chambers Long Cairn is dated to the Neolithic period. And it's in an unexplainable location really. Something of an oddity thanks to its setting in North Wales. Because tombs of this type really belong to the group called Cotswold Southern after the area in which they are generally found. I think there are around 200 known examples of long barrows from this region and it's possibly even more destroyed. So Capel Garman's unusual position so far north remains a real mystery. But it has wonderful views of uh, the peaks of Snowdonia. Now, some ancient sites seem to be able to connect the present to the past and inst instantly connect us to our long-lost ancestors, yet still feeling they are with us. I think this is such a place. It seems otherworldly, even though it's partially ruined, like a portal to another existence or another realm. I've read that during the Paleolithic times that the dead were often laid to rest at the entrances to naturally occurring caves, hollows, rocks as a sort of portal to the afterlife. But with the Neolithic revolution and the long barrows they seemed to eliminate that custom and replaced it by building their own caves or portals to the next life in places often where caves are not too common and it seems possibly gaining more control over the mystery of the cosmos and that would enable them to alter their beliefs to fit personal and social needs and give them a better connection with the dead thus sort of keeping them closer longer physically and emotionally and not just a place where the kin were buried but a place for myths and stories for identity and keeping the beliefs alive. Place to meet at special times of the year and share and remember. Just my thoughts. Now, I had a bit of trouble finding this place, but it was worth the search. There is a small parking sign for the burial chamber near a farm on the main road, but it's easy to miss and the only room for possibly two cars ended up in the village and had to drive back. Now after a short walk past the farm into the fields, you see the Tyen Coed stone, I think it's pronounced, first of all. It's a massive erratic boulder. It measures 16 by 8 by 4 feet. 
and the chamber cane lays it's about 150 yards from it. Now it makes you wonder if there was possibly an ancient relationship between this erratic stone and Capel Gorman chambered cane. Similar to other places where I've visited where monuments are built near unusual natural formations. Possibly used for ceremonies before the chambered cairn was built. I'm just guessing. Now, I described this as ruined, but it, it still looks pretty good. Some of the original stone walls remain in the lower sections of the eastern burial chamber. But only one of the original capstones remain. But it's a big one. But this looking like the main entrance with the capstone was sort of created in the 19th century when it was used to stable horses <coughs> and I noticed it features a large false entrance or portal entrance similar to Bella's nap set to uh, represent the kneeling goddess with the shape of the side walled entrance representing the vulva which is very similar to other ancient monuments found in other megalithic cultures around the world. A bit like some shared knowledge. And surrounding the structure is a ring of stones that seem to be marking the outside of an early 100 foot earthen mound which originally covered it. It would have looked impressive. And a 16 foot passageway leads under the massive capstone to like a triple burial chamber but the real entrance is thought to have been on the south where an inner passage leads to two circular monolith burial chambers a bit like stone circles there was said to have one found at Bella's nap inside it as well and the false entrances may have been created not to deceive grave robbers as used to do in ancient Egypt but simply to create places for various ceremonial observances Now, excavations turned up bits of uh, Neolithic pottery, like beaker pottery. Pieces of a bone were discovered in the passages. But in 1852, an ironwork fire dog was discovered here. Now, a fire dog is like a bracket support on which logs are laid to burn in an open fireplace. It lay on its side with a large stone placed at each end. It was quite deeply buried, apparently carefully placed and unbroken it suggests that it was deliberately placed as an offering to the gods there, there is a long established tradition of depositing metalwork offerings in lakes and rivers and bogs in Wales during the Bronze Age so it might have been connected to that Now this is what's thought to be the real entrance to the south of the monument. The inner passage leads to the two circular burial chambers. And this is the area of the two circular burial chambers, which look like stone circles.
Now this area here is just at the side of the monument. I'm wondering if it could have been the quarry area where the stone was quarried from. Now up on the hillside somewhere close by there's, there's supposed to be a St Garland's well and it's one of six in Wales named after St Garland. I did read that it's uh, close to a place called the Saints Crossing and the field to the north of the site is called Care Saint so it all connects and the water emerges from the hillside in a stone lined spout and it just spreads out to a small muddy pool before flowing down the hillside in a sequence of small waterfalls it can form quite a strong flowing stream at the foot of the hill. 